here, and in today's brief CLV Boost tutorial, we're going to cover three simple ways to optimize your blog content to generate more leads into your business. Now, I personally know a lot of people that literally drive tens of thousands of visitors to their website each month, but when it comes to their monthly revenue, they don't have much to brag about. Now, this typically happens for a couple of reasons. Number one is that people reading your articles will seldom purchase one of your products. Now, not to say that it isn't possible, because it is, and we'll get to that later, but if someone is yet to subscribe to your email list and is just visiting one of your personal web properties, then they probably haven't reached the end of what's called the buyer's journey. Now, as a marketer, it's your job to garner the trust of your audience by providing educational value that gradually moves them closer to their core goals and desires. If you utilize your blog strictly as a pitching platform and do nothing but sell, I promise you that your conversion rates aren't going to be too impressive. Instead, you want your articles to expand on your core value proposition, and you want to indoctrinate your readers about the unique benefits that you can deliver better than anyone else in your niche. Now in the modern age of information marketing, there are these little sites like Google and YouTube that make it virtually effortless for people to access information for free. So if you want to actually make money online, then you'll need to create content on a much more granular level. Which brings me to my second point which is to know the needs of your target audience. Far too often I see small business owners and, market and marketers creating digital products based on their level of expertise and not their customer's needs. Now I'll be the first one to, to admit that I've done this before, but take my word when I say that it got me absolutely nowhere. Your prospects and customers aren't interested in the format of your eBooks, DVDs, and other products that you sell. Instead, they're interested specifically in the solution that you can offer for them that will fulfill their needs. So going forward, each piece of content that you create is going to be predicated on the needs of your audience and not what you think is suitable for them. I promise when you make this paradigm shift, you'll see tangible results in both your leads and sales conversions. Okay, so quick, how do you determine the core needs of your audience? I'm going to give you three quick strategies that you can use and implement right away in your business. If you already have a decent sized email list, the best way to garner this information is by using surveys. So when sending out surveys, to your list, you want to explicitly ask your audience about the fears, frustrations, and obstacles that's impeding them from reaching their goals. Be sure to ask open-ended questions so you can learn the specific phrases that your customers use. All right, When you repurpose their language into your content, it will literally be marketing gold for your e-commerce business. Now, if for any reason you don't have a huge email list, that's perfectly fine. Because the most effective way to understand the needs of your customers is by calling them. I know this may sound a little bit intrusive at first, but speaking to your customers directly will allow you to understand them at a much, much deeper level. Remember that most people aren't going to tell you their deepest and darkest fears if you ask them once. In fact, you'll probably have to ask someone three or four different times before they start revealing their core needs and fears. This is referred to as peeling the onion, and it's one of the most fruitful exercises that you can do in your marketing research. So let me give you a quick example. I have my own uh, business in the fitness niche, and whenever I ask somebody why they want to get in shape, they usually respond with something along the lines of, I want to live a strong, healthy lifestyle. Now, is there anything inherently wrong with living a strong, healthy lifestyle? No, of course not. But is not being healthy the underlying fear for why most people are trying to lose weight? Unfortunately, it's not. Not at all. So, at this point, I'll usually ask my customer again, why are they looking to get healthier and live a stronger life? And they'll typically respond with something along the lines of, I want to feel good and I want to look better. Right? To which I ask them again, why do you want to look and feel better? And maybe they'll say something like, so I can have more self-confidence. To which I ask them again, why do you want to have more self-confidence? And then they finally start divulging their true fears and needs by saying something along the lines of, because my spouse doesn't look at me the same way as they did at the beginning of our marriage. Okay, now this isn't some arbitrary example. In fact, I've had this conversation a multitude of different times, but do you see the disparity between somebody's initial response and their actual fears? Okay, the fastest, most efficient way to determine your customers' needs is by just calling them. Talking to your customers could potentially reveal other pertinent information as well, such as their gender, age demographic, and even their occupation. And finally, if you have any trepidation about calling your customers, go ahead and do it anyways. But let's just say you don't have an email list and you don't have any customers. Just hop on one of the forums in your niche and look at the specific obstacles that people are struggling with and then start incorporating those fears and those needs 
into your content, okay? So now that you understand how to know the needs of your audience, we're gonna cover three simple ways to convert your readers into leads and potential customers. We'll be analyzing two different websites in the internet marketing and fitness niches to see if their blog content meets these three points of criteria. Number one, legitimately superior content. If you're encouraging your reader to take the next step in your marketing sequence, then your branding must look professional. So let's address the obvious first. You always wanna ensure that your pages have a clean layout. In general, the simpler, the better. Refrain from using a bunch of different colors and just make the content digestible and easy to implement for your readers. Number two, relevant next step calls to action. Now, personally, I can say that this is one of the most common mistakes that I see marketers making. You always want your blog content to be congruent with the topic of your lead magnet. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're writing an article about SEO, search engine optimization, and then you offer an opt-in for Facebook marketing. This is probably going to decrease your lead conversions. Why? It's simple, because there's a disconnect in the content. If somebody's clearly interested in a particular blog, blog post, then they'll probably be receptive to an ebook that expands on that particular topic. This is referred to as a content upgrade, and it's essential when it comes to generating leads on your blog. And finally, multiple CTAs or calls to action. Now, there's a point where you can have so many CTAs on your website that it just appears downright spammy, okay? And I see this more often than not. But on the contrary, leveraging multiple CTAs the right way can actually increase the perceived value of your content, thus increase, increasing your leads and sales conversions as well. Okay, so let's apply these three key points to two different websites. First off, we have an article from Kissmetrics, which is an analytics platform for marketers. So here we have an article entitled 10 Quick and Easy Email Marketing Segmentation Strategies to Try Today. So off the bat, this title is very specific. We're going to learn 10 different segmentation strategies right now in this article, and we're going to be able to implement this information today into our business, okay? So we're not going to have to take three or four hours to sit here and read a novel. This information is both consumable and actionable. This definitely qualifies as legitimate superior branding. Second, does it prevent a relevant next step call to action? Absolutely. As you can see here, they have a banner directly below this article that offers a free guide on A-B testing. Now, let's think about this for a second. If you're interested in segmenting your email list, you're probably not a novice marketer. You obviously have an email list to segment, which pretty much requires you to test the various interests, fears, and age demographics of your list. And notice that they aren't using conventional calls to action like sign up, Nope, instead, they're using benefit-driven calls to action that deliver a step-by-step -step process to getting results fast. And finally, you can see that they include multiple calls to action on their website, but they do it in a way that's not cluttered. You can see here on the left-hand sidebar that they have an opt-in for their general newsletter, and they actually have another banner above that offering a free webinar on A-B testing. Once again, this isn't an arbitrary content upgrade. Kissmetrics knows exactly what their audience is interested in, which is email segmentation, and they know that if they're reading this article, there's a good chance that they're also going to be interested in A-B testing. As a result, these three calls to action are appealing rather than spamming. Okay, so for our second example, we're going to take a look at an article from bodybuilding.com, which is definitely an authority site in the fitness niche. Okay, the title of this article is called The Ultimate Guide to Gains. Okay, so is it a huge deal that the word gains is misspelled? Probably not. But as you can see, this article is getting a lot of engagement, and I promise you that there are some people out there that will immediately qualify your content if it has grammatical errors. So just be wary of that. Also, I'm assuming that the ultimate guide to gains is referring to building muscle and size, but I think that this title could be a little bit more specific. Something like five quick tips to building 10 pounds of muscle would probably resonate a little bit more with their audience and increase the overall engagement. So next, are there any relevant calls to action? on this page. Uh, no, there's not. As you can see, there's a sidebar on the left-hand side that's suggesting other relevant topics to blogs, but they aren't encouraging me to do anything at all. So in fact, I have to scroll down all the way to the bottom of the blog before I'm even presented with an option to partake in an eight-week challenge. And even here, look at this. Are, are they, They're telling me to register, but is this a free report? Is it a paid product? Is it a coaching session? I really don't know. And last, are they leveraging multiple calls to action? 
No, they are not. In fact, this banner is the only call to action that I see on this webpage. So despite getting over a million visitors per month, bodybuilding.com could without a doubt increase their conversions by polishing up their content, making their calls to action more congruent with their users' needs, and adding some additional calls to action on both the sidebars and headers of their individual pages. Okay, so that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. And while there are thousands of places online to learn about online marketing, we here at CLV Boost focus specifically on marketing automation, marketing optimization, and email marketing. If you haven't already, be sure to visit clvboost.com to download our free guide of five plug and play strategies to attract and convert more leads and subscribers into your business. And if you've enjoyed today's video and want to get the latest of our marketing breakdowns, be sure to subscribe and like this video below. Happy marketing, my friends, and we'll see you in the next CLV Boost tutorial.